Hey guys, Lucas here. Uh, just a quick update on GeoPix mapping software. Uh, two big features I've added uh, in addition to a couple uh, minor fixes here and there and a few positional updates as well. Uh, when you position your panels, as it was before, you just pretty much had to eyeball it. Now you have a way to type in panel positions, which is super nice for making symmetrical layouts a lot more easy or easier. Uh, when you deselect all the panels, you have a crosshair that shows up. And this guide is, is very similar. It's basically, oops, 50 is what I meant. Uh, basically, you can position it any way you want. And then when you select a panel, you can snap it to the center of that crosshair. So it's basically a positional anchor, uh, if you will. So moving on from there, uh, previously you've been able to save and load and clear your pixel map, which is your workspace essentially, what you see here. Um, however, we now have the ability to export a pixel map into a slightly different format, but it's essentially containing the same information. Uh, this exported pixel map is, we'll go and do one, we'll export real quick, and if you check out your folder, it drops it into whatever folder you have specified in settings, in this case here. Uh, and, and there you go, it, it looks the same, same format as all the information you saved, uh, just tab, sep tab separated coordinates. But this is coordinates for your entire pixel map, keep in mind, not just the panel. Uh, the way we use this will come into play in the Smart Clip Editor in just a sec. Uh, but the, the point of this is, is to export various mappings using different panels and different fixtures and different layouts, different rotations. Uh, and then you can call these in your smart clips as an override for specific animations, which allows you to do lots of cool things with content. Uh, if you have a simple ramp moving left to right or top to bottom, uh, when you're moving it across your, your physically mapped panels normally, you see exactly what you see on screen. But when you change the mapping to something different than how it's physically mapped, you can get some really cool effects. And there's a lot of potential there for simple content and different mapping. I mean, it just it, it opens up so many doors. It's amazing. Uh, we'll get to that in an example here in a sec. So the pixel map is one side of that. The other side is the masking. Um, here we have a simplified view of just the LEDs. And with simple marquee tools, you can um, shift select. And sometimes you have to toggle shift and control to, to unstick them. They get stuck sometimes. But you can basically select and, and add to that selection. Um, you can use control to remove from a selection, uh, which is super useful. You can very quickly get some pretty interesting shapes in your panels. Um, and there isn't really an easy way to do this otherwise. You could, I suppose, render this into your content, but then you have to write content for every different mapping variation or or masking variation you'd like, and that can be really slow and tedious. Whereas this takes mere minutes and accounts for maybe a couple of kilobytes per mask. And you know, this goes a long way. So here's how you use this. You export this, uh, you can invert and save another one if you want to. We can go ahead and go back to our main mode here. Now we've exported a pixel map and a mask in our smart clip editor. Let's just drag a clip over here so you can see it working. Uh, we'll use this one's fun. Um, oh, and by the way, uh, when you add smart clips, same as before, however, now you can actually type in coordinates for your handles. Super useful. You can uh, be much more precise with your layouts in terms of, of coordinates and, and all that stuff. So here we have choose map and choose mask. So the way this works, you choose a map and we have default, but it has the default with two dots at the end and beginning that is signifying that it's it's pulling this map here uh, which is selectable from your pixel map in other words it's the system default it's embedded in the program it's being streamed it's real time um, and this is what you normally would have had this this is what would have been used before uh, you wouldn't have had this option to choose but this is what was being used you know exactly what was over there in the pixel map editor this is what we saved out. As you can see, it's no different than the default because we didn't make any changes. But down below, I have one called Buildings, uh, where it's the same panels. And all I did was I rotate the squares a little bit, and I rotate the triangles and move them around. Uh, but it's the same fixture, same panels, same LED counts in all of the panels. That's super important. If you're going to mix and match 
um, mapping and masking files, you have to be sure that your pixel counts per panel per device are remaining constant. And if you do change that, be sure you're doing it intentionally because you can have some very weird results. It will still work, but your masks will look weird. They'll look different. They'll look offset because uh, when you select your masks, it's, it's going off of you know you're selecting them visually but it's going off of the the uh, the LED indices and that's really important so let's go and go with default for now let's just choose a mask as you can see I exported one earlier called edges uh, edges man and basically it's the edges of all the tiles that took a little bit longer to select but very neat looking effect and you could modify this and do all kinds of things to it here you can see the one that we just quickly did uh, let's go with edges for now uh, as you see I got map is default mask is edges I'll just save this as tutorial. Um, jumping back over here, let's go ahead and do the visualizer. You can see just how this looks. Uh, it's pretty neat. You know, the edges is a really cool effect, and you can of course do all kinds of things with this with this content and this type of this um, this type of customization. You know, we have this animation is cool. It's very slow, um, but it, it gets old pretty quick and by by changing the mask and changing the way it's mapped you can just breathe new life into old content and simple content and you're dealing with low res LEDs like these where you have a, a 60 per meter pitch or less or more you can't really do I mean you can but it doesn't look as good to do the super high res uh, super grant you know granulated content that you usually see at shows and stuff like that. You really kind of have to stick with the low res, super colorful, super contrasty stuff, which I think is nice. It's it's a it's a good blend between um, lighting fixtures and video walls, and it's it's an interesting place to experiment. Uh, but I digress. Uh, basically, these two combining these two different ways and doing different things with these can give you just lots of really neat effects and. To illustrate that further, let's go ahead and choose buildings. Um, I'll leave, I'll, I'll go put this back to default. Let's save it again. And here we have the very same animation, but now we have definitely some different motion going on. As you can see, we have more of a diagonal thing happening, and that's because I rotated the squares 45 degrees in this mapping. See, this is default. I rotated them 45 degrees, so now they're, they're at you know they look like squares that are not 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 diamonds and squares and since our panels are still physically or you know in this case digitally arranged the same way it looks like they're moving in different ways and of course the crazier you get with the mapping the more interesting this will become if i use a vertical strip of you know 100 pixels in place of a panel uh, it's going to do a very different thing when it comes to content and it's one of those things you just have to play with and the great thing about the editor is you can you can pop open the visualizer in another window and you can just continuously tweak and change and try new things when you find a combination of a look that you like you just save that as a smart clip and it's in your library so that is how that's that's working right now that's how it's intended to work there'll be some probably more updates and changes but that is pretty much set that's going to work. If you have any suggestions or ideas, though, definitely let me know. Always open to making it better in a practical way. And let's see if I can just show you one more thing here. Not a big thing, but I think interesting nonetheless. Uh, if we go and choose edges again, save this real quick. Uh, so when you're in perform mode, As you can see, we go from a piece of content that's got normal mapping, uh, which it's going across everything spatially, just normal 101. And then when we fade, you're going to see if we're halfway, not only um, in this case, our mapping is the same um, from left to right. So that's not changing. But our, ma our mask is fading, and our map would also fade with it. So if we were halfway between these and we had two different mappings, the physical location of those two mappings would be half and half. 
And so while you're in the middle, you'd have like a really organic shift happening between left and right, or right and left, which I think is worth mentioning. It's very neat that you can slowly and, and gradually fade. Nothing's jumping or stuttering or being too sudden. It's a very smooth um, transition. So that that is it. That's it for now. I will cut this off and, and keep you guys posted on any new updates. Uh, one other thing for forming mode. Uh, it looks a lot different than last time. It's going to look a lot different before I release it. It's still a lot to do here, um, and which is why I'm not going to kind of jump in here in, in any depth in this video. So um, if you haven't seen the last video, I'll put a link in the description. Check it out. It's super informative. Thanks. Bye.